In this section, I'm going to talk about combined heat and power, or CHP for short. So I'm going to talk about um, why CHP is a good idea. Um, I'm also going to present, you know, what it is, and I'm going to kind of show its benefits through um, an example, which I'm going to give you, which um, will clearly show the benefit. I'm also going to talk about where it's best used, which is kind of one of its um, disadvantages in that it can't be used everywhere. Okay, so I'm just going to start with this. This shows um, an energy flow chart for um, power generation and power usage in the UK. So you can see on the left hand side that we've got all the forms of um, our primary forms of energy. So natural gas, coal, electricity, bioenergy petroleum and so long and I um, appreciate the writing on this slide might be a bit small so if you click on the QR code you'll be able to go to the UK website and get the the latest data and you also see some interesting trends in that the UK um, you know is now reducing its dependency on coal so the, the the thickness of this line has got smaller compared to previous years because um, this is uh, the thickness of the line is the amount of energy that's um, you know is proportional to the um, the magnitude of the energy. Okay, so we've got our primary sources on the left hand side, and then we've got our kind of um, consumption on the right hand side. So we've got transport, domestic, industry, iron, steel, and so on. Now you might um, notice some of the eagle-eyed amongst you that um, on the left hand side our um, uh, production is higher than our total final consumption okay and one of the reasons for that um, you know some of it's been exported and so on but one major factor in this is um, losses okay losses in the in the system I'm sorry not losses in the system but losses in the production okay and in particular I'll kind of draw your attention to the center of this plot which is our power stations so you know coal-fired bioenergy and natural gas and, and nuclear and so on and the conversion losses now this is fundamentally if you remember um, back to the start of the course this is due to the second law of thermodynamics that uh, a heat engine cannot work on a cycle without rejecting some heat to its surroundings so it is just a natural consequence of a heat engine that it will will um, lose heat or sorry reject some heat as part of that cycle so it's something we can't get away from so um, obviously this is you know going to have an impact this is why part of the reason why our total final consumption is lower than the energy that's going in okay and we kind of knew that already but you can um, that describes the lines on this plot so, can we do anything with that waste heat? Well, um, that's what combined heat and power is all about. So the idea of a combined heat and power plant, or CHP plant, is that you do actually recover some of that um, energy from the exhaust. Okay, so a combined heat and power plant operates on the kind of following principles. So you have your, your heat engine, and that could be a reciprocating engine or a turbine or whatever it is, um, it's not really important, and that generates work, okay, so you put an energy in here, generates work, which you then um, can produce electricity from. Now, the exhaust gases, normally these would be wasted, so this is uh, the bit that satisfies the second law, that you have to reject heat um, from this process, from this cycle. Now, those exhaust gases, the difference here is that these exhaust gases go into a heat exchanger, Okay, and so they transfer the heat from the exhaust to um, the the water in this circuit. So we have this um, you know sort of um, system here. So we, we're taking the heat from the exhaust, heating the water that's passing through. Okay, I've shown a a home in this instance. It could be a, an industrial process. It could be you know something else. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, the heat is extracted here, so we have a cold return that's heated and so on. And we, we vent um, uh, cooler exhaust gases. 
Okay, so you can see that rather than just wasting the heat from this exhaust, okay, we are actually, um, you know, using it to do something useful. So as you'd kind of anticipate, the um, overall efficiency of this combined heat and power unit um, is, is higher than just the engine kind of working by itself, okay? But it's to do with the fact that you you need that heat at, sort at, at the plates as well, okay? So I can illustrate this with an example, okay? So we're going to take, um, you know, this block of flats, which is shown schematically in the middle. And just for the sake of argument, we're going to say that this um, block of flats takes 40 units of electrical energy and 45 units of thermal energy okay so to, so to heat the building and that's the important point with this combined heat and power it's the power the electricity but you also need a an application that requires the heat as well and obviously you know accommodation is, is one of those okay so um, 45 units of thermal energy heating heating the building and 40 units um, of electrical energy you know to power the various um, appliances. Now, conventionally, this would supply in the, the power to this building would essentially be the power station, okay? And if we say that that's running on a, um, and you can see that's giving us our 40 units of electricity that's going into the building, and the thermal efficiency of the power stations, as we know from examples we've done when we're looking at thermodynamic cycles and ranking cycle, is around about 40%. Okay. Boilers, they do tend to be um, higher um, efficiency in terms of their, their thermal output. So it's all we've also got a boiler supplying heat to this building. Okay, and this is giving us our 45 units of um, thermal energy that we need. But a, as I just said, a boiler has a higher thermal efficiency, and that's around about 90%. Okay? So we're just going to do a, you know, a little analysis here. So we can see we've got the energy that we need going in. We've got these thermal efficiencies. So how many units of energy do we need to input? Well, if we get 45 units thermal energy out of the boiler, okay, and it has a thermal efficiency of 90%, then we need to put in 50 units of energy, okay? And by balancing this, we know that five units are being rejected, okay? So 50 units in, 90% of them are turned into thermal energy, five units are rejected. And now we can do a similar um, analysis on the power station, okay? So it's given four units to the, the building, it has a thermal efficiency of um, forty percent. So, as you probably worked out, we need to put in a hundred units of energy into the power station. Forty percent of them converted into electricity, and then the remaining sixty units are rejected um, as, <coughs> as part of uh, you know that second order that we've, which we've already described. Okay, so that's sort of how we would conventionally supply power and heat to this building through essentially the power station and through um, uh, a boiler. Now, let's replace this with a combined heat and power, heat and power plant, okay? So this CHP plant is providing our 45 units of thermal energy and our 40 units of electrical energy. Now let's say the um, electrical efficiencies the same and that that's um, a reasonable assumption because it's going to be operating on the similar principles of um, you no know, thermodynamic cycle okay and let's say the thermal um, uh, conversion efficiency is lower okay and again that's reasonable because if you think about what's happening the 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 heat is be um, is lower grade okay um, because you're taking the heat from the exhaust so your your efficiencies from that's going to be lower so let's say that's around 45 percent okay and I've kind of made these numbers up and I've also made them up um, you know to make the maths easier to, just to illustrate the point 
Um, but obviously, if you're doing this an example, you'd need to use you know whichever values you've got. So we can see that if we're getting 45 units um, of thermal energy and 40 units of electrical energy, and these are our efficiencies, then we need to put in 100 units of energy into this CHP plant, don't we? Okay, so we're putting in 100 units in. You can see we're getting 85 units out in total. So therefore, we're rejecting 15 units. However, now if we compare our sort of conventional um, system on the left to our CHP plant on the right, if we look at what's going in, then for our conventional system, we're using um, input in 150 units of energy to get this total of 85 to supply our building. Whereas on the right hand side, we're only putting in a, a hundred units. Okay, so but that combined heat and power plant is more efficient than getting the heat and power from separate sources. Okay, so that's the important um, point to consider here. Now, I've perhaps been a bit um, uh, naughty here and shown that the CHP plant is only supplying is the only source of thermal energy and power to this building. The reality is is that when you're sizing a CHP plant, often you might you will need either top up heat or um, top up power from the grid, depending on the demand and size of the CHP plant. And that that's um, a bit of the art in sizing the CHP plant because you don't want it too big, um, you know, in that it's producing you know too big for its application. And equally, you don't want it too small in that it's um, you need to access you know a, more top up power and um, heat from from the network. Okay, so just bear in mind that you might need um, top up um, thermal energy and and electricity. Okay, but in principle, um, the CHP plant is more efficient. So the places where um, CHP um, is really good for are sites that have quite a high thermal load and also quite a high electrical load okay and the, this is going to be year round as well okay so you can see the list I've put up here so good sites are swimming pools okay you think all the hot water that's used in a, um, a leisure centre in a swimming pool along with the power hospitals ditto um, got a high thermal electrical load, residential homes, university campuses, um, that kind of thing. So these are good sites for um, CHP plant, plants. Sites that aren't so um, good for this type of technology are offices, retail stores, museums, schools, anywhere where um, you don't have that sort of um, kind of high demand year round so obviously the schools are shut you know during the summer um you know uh other places switch on and off so they don't have that high year round thermal and electrical load which is really what you need for chp so the technology is good um but it's not applicable for every application unfortunately and one other thing to bear in mind um about CHP plants is that they are good, but as the um, the the national um, grid is being decarbonized, when you do the look at the the sort of carbon balance of a CHP plant, you can see that actually unless we start switching to biofuels in CHP plants, then the kind of carbon um, effectiveness of these these plants has actually been um, uh, reduced due to the fact that the grid is being um, decarbonized. Okay, so that, that's something to bear in mind.